if you've been watching along, you've probably enjoyed our bus demolition a lot more than we have. <laughs> this is my least favorite part of the demo so far. It's actually much more enjoyable when it's in fast motion, edited down to just the exciting parts. And we film way ahead of time because we just don't have the capacity to film, work on the bus, edit videos, and put it all together at the same time. If you're wondering why we're in beautiful fall foliage around us, it's because this is the end of our season two bus demolition video series. Keep watching season three to find out where we are right now. <laughs> so as we've been putting out the videos, we get some questions from viewers and friends and thought it'd be fun to just share some of those frequently asked questions. We're on a mission to find a new place to call home, so we are going to visit places that we're interested in living in, but we're also out for adventure. We don't have an exact trip laid out because we don't know when we're gonna finish working on the bus, and the weather will determine our route. We <laughs> <laughs> always want to be in pleasant weather. Some of the states that we're thinking about visiting are Colorado, Oregon, New Mexico. But with that said, we also are very open to being surprised along the way. We may run into a beautiful location that we've never thought of. There's also several places throughout North America and maybe even Central America that we would like to visit. We don't necessarily know how long we'd want to stay there, but one of the freedoms of living in a bus is that we'll be able to drive to a spot we want to see, like the Florida coastline, uh, New Orleans, through parts of Canada. There's a lot of beautiful places in North America. If you have any suggestions of places you think we should visit, please comment below, give us ideas. We are creating a list of places we want to go. For a long time, I think Mela and I have reached levels of professional success and artistic success with things we loved and things we wanted to do, um, but I still hadn't necessarily found the right lifestyle for us. I think we both felt like outsiders, and going tiny in a bus is going to give us an opportunity to find people that are our own tribe and find a culture, a uh, place we'd like to live in. When Don and I first moved in together as a couple, we lived in a big house. It was, what, four bedrooms? It had a beautiful view, and we kind of thought we were in our dream house, in our dream location, but it was a lot to keep up. We wanted our life to be more about experiences and enjoying life rather than having things rule our life. And especially living where we did near Malibu, the cost of housing is ridiculous in order to save up money to buy a house. It was gonna be a challenge, and there became a point where we decided that wasn't something we wanted to commit to for the long term. I think downsizing, minimizing, and looking at living simply and enjoying what we do have really made sense to us. We purchased an MCI D3 40 foot 1996 51 passenger bus. We paid $17,500 for it. It's a lot more money than what we anticipated spending once we first started looking at school buses when people were saying they could get them for $3,500. bucks. The reason we did invest in this bus is because we did so much research and I talked to so many mechanics and bus people and even people at MCI, the company that made the bus, were very helpful recommending something that would be strong both structurally and engine wise. We did see MCI buses around the same year as our bus at uh, cheaper prices. They did kind of range from what probably 10,000 to 14,000 
or some of the cheaper ones we saw, but they had body damage and the engine was going to need work and you're going to end up putting that money into the bus to get it to a good place where you feel safe and comfortable driving it. What we liked about our bus is it really didn't need much work. There was no visible body rust anywhere when we purchased the bus. As you've seen, if you've watched the bus demolition videos, we've uncovered a little rust in areas like in the bathroom area where water had sat and rusted away some of the support beams. Those things are not structural. We cut them out, we ripped them out, we've since sanded, repainted, and now we know what are, is inside our bus. We're originally thinking about getting a schoolie, but we decided to switch to the MCI bus because it was more powerful and would be better for what we wanted to do and to be able to tow our car. It's just a lot stronger. The reason we didn't go for an RV is because we really wanted to customize the bus for our specific needs. We actually did rent an RV. Uh, we have a little video series of us experimenting in an RV, seeing what it might be like to live with three cats. The more time we spent in an RV, the more we realized that those things are not made to last. They're not made to live in full time. They're not made to travel full time. They're made for a few weekends a year and we knew that wasn't going to work for us. Some people do live in RVs full time and that works for them, but we didn't feel like it was the right thing for us. I can't tell you how many movies or TV shows we've watched where they laugh about so-and-so who's 40 and still living with his parents in their basement and we just look at each other and crack up because that's <laughs> us guys. A really wonderful experience. I think anyone who maybe grew up and had a good relationship with their parents as a child and has spent as much time away like I have from where I grew up, it's great to come back to reconnect with my mom and my dad, get to spend a little bit more time with them, see them every day, share things together. Hey, I'm glad I ate my vitamins this morning. They've really offered us a fantastic opportunity. We feel fortunate to get to spend this time with them. Living in the basement <laughs> is not necessarily the best thing, but we do have our own little space and a little bit of a privacy um, by living downstairs in the unfinished basement. But it's not an ideal living situation and it does get a little depressing because there are no windows down there. So I can't tell what time of day it is, what the weather's like, and that's weird and not ideal, but. There's two windows <laughs> and they're this big. And there's no light coming through them. <laughs> I guess I think that we're determined for a dream that we have. It's a wonderful opportunity to spend time with people that we care about and that are supportive and care about us, as well as give us this freedom to work on the bus. We're super grateful to have a place to stay with Don's parents. Best landlords ever. <laughs> Some of you might know I have been writing and producing music for 15 or 20 years with lots of commercials and TV shows and some movie trailers. And a question I get from my music friends and the little music culture I belong in online is, am I going to have a studio on the bus? The answer is, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dedicating a space that is convertible into a area I can work on music. It's not going to be a full-blown, full-time studio by any means. I've prepared a lot of gear in advance knowing that this is where we want to end up having a little workspace in the bus that's powerful for me to do scores of all kinds and any kind of music work. Another question some people ask is, do I write all the music for our videos? And the answer is no. <laughs> There's been two episodes where I've used a lot of my own music, um, but the time to create music just for our videos, would I do not have the bandwidth to do that. We barely have the bandwidth to make the videos that we work on as it is. He did write the music for trailer for season number two. Oh, and the theme song. And the, the theme song. RH8 theme song. We'll put links to the trailer music um, if you want to go check out and listen to Don's compositions. Well, you can do Pilates anywhere, but 
Yeah, I am a Pilates freak, so I will have Pilates apparatus in the bus. Everything has to have like a double purpose in the bus, so there's not just one room for Pilates, like there can't be just one room for Don's music studio, but things will be able to convert and change from being one thing to being another. We will keep sharing some posts as we go to see if it works out, because we don't know yet. <laughs> we have some ideas of how to make things work. Um, but. We'll keep you posted on that. Now, I want to preface this answer by saying we're not zero waste. We're learning to become zero waste. It's been a little over a year, and I feel like we've done really well. Yeah. There's still some areas we have to improve on. Um, and I don't know how to get around some of the things. It's possible to live zero waste or to reduce your waste wherever you live. In LA there were a lot of stores that sold products in bulk and supported that kind of lifestyle which they do exist here in the Midwest but perhaps there's not as many and I definitely feel like a lot of the community that we are shopping in I see people using plastic bag after plastic bag so yeah around us there are a lot of people being very wasteful and using a lot of plastic, but that doesn't mean that we have to. And we are kind of the freaks. A lot of the time, we have to make sure we get to the shop and say, no, 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 take my stuff out the plastic bag, because they're so used to it. And like, even though you've given them your bags, they automatically go to the plastic bag. So it's just, it's not common here, but it's totally possible. You just have to want to do it. The other thing that I think we really have enjoyed, have a compost bin in the kitchen that we are later able to dump in a compost heap outside. It's reduced our waste significantly, I would say at least by more than half. <laughs> yes, when we travel cross country from LA to the Midwest, we were just glamping. Like that's not how we're going to live in the bus. And if you haven't seen that video, there's a series of videos of our adventure for the first time driving the bus across the country and glamping in it. Yes, go check that out, how we lived. <laughs> it was roughing it and we are not going to be roughing it in this bus. We're going to have a full kitchen. But we are going to have a fridge and a stove top and a dishwasher, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> if we ever get that dishwasher. A fully functioning bathroom with a toilet, shower, and a sink. The only things we haven't figured out is, are we going to have a washer-dryer combo? Is that something that's in the cards for us, space-wise, or even efficiency-wise? Since we don't plan on being connected to city water at any point, really. So, yes. We're going to try to have a full house inside the bus. It's going to be a small full house, so it will definitely be a tiny house. We've been working a lot of different plans, trying to nail down what will work best, and in Season 3 we'll definitely start sharing that more with you. And I'm sure our design will change as we start to build and realize what will work. Mella and I have some big ideas about maybe what we might be able to do with the videos and the YouTube channel after we finish our build and that would be our take on a travel channel. As we travel we also want to take workshops and classes and learn about some of the subjects we're interested in because we are looking to live a more sustainable lifestyle when we do settle down once we found a place to call home. Things like permaculture, beekeeping, building earthships, so we'll take you along on that whole journey, and if you have suggestions for classes we should take, let us know. You don't in 42 states, and you do in 8 states. It's a little strange and complicated. Different states have different laws. The states that we have the bus titled in and that I have my driver's license in don't require a special driver's license. If you can believe it or not, I just got in the bus one day and drove it three or four miles and then a few weeks later drove it all the way across the country. But the reason behind it is because it is registered as an RV. So we couldn't actually drive it when we bought it because it still had the passenger seats in and until we changed the registration to be an RV and had the seats removed, that is when you are allowed to drive the bus. 
Well, it's definitely going to be a challenge to keep up some of the practices um, that we have in reducing our waste on the bus, but I do think it is doable. And I don't know how it'll go. We'll have to see what our challenges are. We've taken small steps in hopes of having zero waste as an end goal. We're learning as we go, and we've been sharing some videos on the channel about the things we've done. Uh, we'll include a link to our zero waste journey playlist below as well. I know from our glamping trip one of the things we struggled with as we went to camping sites was there was no way to recycle. They had you know places for trash and to dump your black water tanks and but there was no recycling. Our recycling is full from the week because there was only one RV park that took some recycling so I know we're going to have to seek those things out. Keep watching and see how we do. <laughs> but I think it is very, very possible. I think there are people living uh, full-time in buses and RVs that do live a responsible life. You don't have to be wasteful. Everybody who may be aspiring to a zero-waste lifestyle is going to be in a different place in their journey. And the important thing is that you are trying. If you have any other questions for us, comment below. If you've been enjoying our videos, I'm excited to announce that we've started a Patreon page. For as little as $3 a month, you can join our Rehabit Tribe and get access to exclusive content. And help us continue to create these videos.